ladies and gentlemen of the jury. A few months ago, we met one by one when we told you the state of Texas has brought an indictment against this defendant, Christopher Love, for capital murder. And we told you that capital murder is an intentional killing during the course of a robbery. But what have you learned this week? You have learned that we know this was an intentional killing during the course of a robbery because it was always meant to be a killing. It was always meant to be a killing. It was a hit. It was to look like a robbery. So that's how we know it's an intentional killing during the course of a robbery. And we told you that we had to prove to you that indictment on that sheet of paper. When you all sat in that chair one by one, we had to prove to you those elements beyond a reasonable doubt. And we talked about how beyond a reasonable doubt was not 100% certainty. We talked about how it's using your common sense and reasoning to determine how the pieces of the puzzle fit together. I think I even joked with some of you all about watching Will of Fortune. You learned this week that this defendant, along with Brenda Delgado and Crystal Cortez, intended to kill Ms. Hatcher. He was the person who pulled the trigger. You also heard a lot of testimony about Brenda Delgado and how she did not like Dr. Hatcher and how she wanted to eliminate her. And at some point, you may have thought, who's trial is this? But there's a reason we had to bring you that testimony. You needed to know the backstory to understand how we got to the events that happened on September 2nd of 2015. You needed to hear how this defendant met two females, and on the very first day he met them, he agreed to kill someone he didn't even know. It was important for you to learn that information. And so now you have the task, as the judge stated, to judge the credibility of the witnesses. You have Crystal Cortez, and I'm sure Mr. Johnson will get up here and tell you how Crystal Cortez probably can't tell you if the sun is shining outside and you believe her or not with her. Because she told so many lies and so many stories about this offense. And then you heard the defendant's version of the offense. And you are tasked to determine, who do I believe? Who's telling the truth? What really happened? Then I'm going to tell you it was a cast of characters that came in and dealt with these people, but these were their friends. This is who they hung out with. This is who they chose to be with. However, Crystal Cortez's story can be corroborated by several different pieces of evidence. My co-counsel stood up and told you at the beginning of this trial that he was going to prove to you this case by witness testimony, by physical evidence, And we did that. The first person that corroborates Crystal Cortez's story, I will submit to you, is Mr. Saez. He's in the parking garage. He hears Dr. Hatcher screaming. He, he said it, stated, it sounded like an animal, that it was so loud and so harsh. He heard gunshots. He heard tire killing. And then he saw a black Jeep. The same black Jeep that Jose Ortiz told you that he had loaned to Brenda Delgado and was returned to him later that evening by Crystal Cortez. If you recall Mr. Saeed's testimony, he talked about how those events happened very, very fast. The shots, the screams, the shots, the tires. Angelica Gordon tells you, yeah, I saw them all talking and conspiring over at the apartment on Surrey Road. Everybody in Dallas knows it's Surrey Road. Where does Crystal Cortez tell you she meets him? At apartment 1032. Same apartment. Now, we may not like Crystal Cortez. We may never want to hang out with her. And we all may think she's a horrible, horrible person. But she came in here and she told you the truth. The cell phone records, that was a tedious 
testimony, right? It took us a time to get there. And I would admit, it's a lot. But there are certain things that have to happen so you can see the end result. I wish I could have just walked in and showed you this nice little map and said, yeah, they were together this time on the day of the offense around 10.34 a.m. However, the law doesn't allow us. But Crystal Cortez says what? I dropped him off that jack in the box. We went and exchanged the BMW for the black Jeep Cherokee, and we went back to pick him up. Dad and I sitting in jack in the box together. Then we went down to Dr. Hatcher's apartment. We were, hanging, we were waiting on her and we were watching. So not only did the cell towers corroborate that particular event, but we also had photos of them sitting in the parking lot across the street from the parking garage. Corroboration. Remember, I'm not asking you to like her. I'm just telling you what she told you is true. Let's talk about the photos that was in his phone. This defendant has a photo of a murder weapon. Not just a gun, the actual murder weapon in his phone. This defendant has the murder weapon 30 days after the offense, hidden in a compartment in his car. The only way you get to robbery in this jury charge is if you believe his ridiculous story. It's so ridiculous. He would have you to believe that he got into that truck, Crystal Cortez shot from a distance, the bullet flew through the air, landed into Dr. Hatchett's car on the four passenger board, and that's how this event occurred. It's ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. This video, the evidence, is that he got out of that car. He walked over. He shot her in the back of her head. He shot her in a downward motion when that bullet traveled from front to back and came out of her teeth. And that cartridge landed in her floor or on her passenger seat of her car. He did that. Crystal Cortez never exited that vehicle. He did. Whoever exited that vehicle, is the one who made that shot. And we know that because even though the defense will argue about this 45 seconds, 45 seconds, you never see that car stop, you never see the black truck stop, you never see the truck behind it stop. The truck goes down, it makes two lefts, I'm sorry, three lefts, according to Mrs. Sight, according to Crystal, you have to turn left, to turn left, to turn left, to come back up to get out. 45 seconds. There's no unaccounting for 45 seconds. That story is utterly ridiculous and insulting. And then he gets paid for his actions. Because the Cortez says she has $500 and he's looking for his cush. We know Crystal Cortez is arrested on the 5th, so he couldn't have got the gun after that. His story is ridiculous. Corroboration. Dr. Hatcher has gunshot residue on the back of her knees. There's no way that that could have occurred if Crystal Corquette did shot him, shot her, I'm sorry, from the car. There's no way it would occur. Again, the person who got out of the vehicle, who went over, shot her in the back of the head, and took her belongings is the defendant. And for that reason, we're going to ask that you find him guilty of capital murder. Thank you.